Okay, so I can't look this direction because my whole family's there and I'll start <laughs> crying. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna get right into it. So hit it, Steve. At a young age, I realized I was different from most kids. I was scared of most things that were fun to others. What kid can say that they were terrified of dying because they burned their finger on a cigarette lighter in the back of a 92 Ford Astro van? I just might be the only one I know of. I was afraid of theme park rides, elevators, and water slides. Vacations to Six Flags and Lagoon really weren't as fun as they looked on TV. I admit I can't even handle thinking about these things today. If you catch me in an elevator, which isn't very often, you might see me plugging my ears, a coping mechanism I started when I was a kid. At 11 years old, we moved from eastern Montana to Butte. Moving was rough for our whole family. My dad, a year later, was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. OCD is an anxiety disorder in which people have unwanted and repeated thoughts, feelings, images, and sensations. These are considered obsessions and can turn into engaging in behaviors or mental acts in response to these thoughts or obsessions. Often a person with OCD carries out the behaviors to reduce the impact or get rid of the obsessive thoughts. But there is only temporary relief. Not performing can cause great anxiety. In my dad's case, he was thinking that he had hit someone with his truck when he hadn't. We'd be heading to school, he'd stop the truck and walk around it a few times to check. My brother and I had a good laugh about this. Throughout the years, we adapted as a family, but never truly understood what was going on. My anxiety increased as I got older. I had a few unwanted intrusive thoughts, but never really registered that I myself could have OCD. I was afraid of doing things that I knew I'd never do, like hurt someone or hurt myself. I was dating my husband, John, during this time. He's so logical that I knew I had to talk to him about it, but it's scary and really embarrassing to say out loud. He noticed me putting laundry at night in front of my bedroom door to block myself in, even though I never slept walk in my life. I was doing this to prevent myself from doing something in my sleep. John, of course, told me what I needed to hear. It's just the thought. That's not you. Well, duh. How logical. But in an OCD mind, your left and right brain are in a constant battle. I have shared mine and my family's story of OCD with many people. Most look at OCD as it's just a repetitive hand-washing disorder. It's more complex than that. There are many subtypes of OCD. For example, harm OCD is a common subtype of OCD. Those who suffer from harm OCD have a fear of harming oneself, a loved one, or a stranger, fear of losing consciousness and harming someone, fear of accidentally poisoning someone, those are the obsessions. The compulsions can be hiding everyday objects, such as kitchen knives, ropes, scissors, and forks. Another symptom is checking, <clears throat> making sure you act, didn't accidentally poison someone's food or drink. Another is reassurance, constantly seeking reassurance from others. A last one is re research, looking up convicted criminals online who have harmed others and making sure that you don't have the same characteristics. I myself have done three out of the four of these compulsions. There are many common misconceptions of harm OCD. The first is that OCD only comes in one general type, that subsets don't exist. Some people also think they have these thoughts as a reflection of your character or moral compass. Finally, people may think that someone with harm OCD is more likely to act on their thoughts than a non-sufferer. Here's a little fun fact about those intrusive thoughts. Four out of five people experience intrusive thoughts, even thoughts about harming themselves or the ones they love. But for one in 50, these thoughts become harder to dismiss. With my constant brain chatter, I'm still able to persevere. It's a lot of hard work, but I work on it every minute of every day. I have been doing hair for 12 years now and opened my second salon in two years. I'm proud to say I'm successful. Most of my clients know I battle anxiety, and they definitely know I'm a hypochondriac. And this year alone, I thought I've had cancer of some sort, Art issues and probably Ebola. <laughs> Talking with my clients about my battles makes it easier for them to talk to me about theirs. It's great to be able to connect with people and make them feel good at the same time with a new hairstyle.
I'm super grateful that I get to share this OCD journey with my dad. We can help each other. There's no better feeling than being able to help my dad through a rough patch. <laughs> and to help my mom understand it more. To be able to give to them like they've given to me for the past 33 years. Me and my dad can help each other in many ways. We can offer a logical brain, even though we're so irrational with ourselves. Laughter is the greatest medicine here. At the end of the day, just knowing someone else who's going through the same things as you puts me at the most ease. I'm super proud of my dad. The last pa the p this past year has been a battle of ups and downs with his OCD. He is and has been persevering through the downs and working hard on himself. No matter what age we are, we still continue to work. <clears throat> we still have to continue to work on ourselves. During this past year, it's also been great to see my parents, after almost 37 years, still work together. Watching my mom supporting my dad in any way she can makes my heart full. I wish this for other families that battle mental illness. Just like laughter being the best medicine, love is too. I'm grateful for my host, the logical husband, John. Without him, I think I'd be hiding out in a box. He's always, he always says to me, if hips and butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> that little saying has brought me from complete anxiousness to absolute laughter. And as we know, laughter is the best medicine. I have to admit, doing pachachka was really hard for me. My brain wanted to get in the way, but I'm here. So thank you for letting me tell my story of difficulty and laughter. <laughs>